In this video, I'm going to show you how to use InDesign to make a double page spread for your magazine with rollover buttons that change on click. Like all good design work, I started with a plan. I did a rough drawing of what I want my double page spread to look like. I then searched for my images that I want to use as my thumbnails. I found recipes to correspond with each of the images. I'm also going to use the same image as my larger image over here. I also thought about the fonts that I wanted to use for my headline and for the body of my text. Any of these tools that you open and have new windows, when you're finished with them, just grab onto them and pull them over to the side and you can place them in your toolbar down the side and each of those will pop out when you need them or pop back in again. Before I do any design work, I created a new layer and called it pages 6 and 7. I dropped it down below the layer called pages 4 and 5. And if I click on this drop down arrow and open the layer up, you can see all the sub layers or elements that have been used in this double page spread. I also named each of these sub layers, but I'll speak more about that as we work through the tutorial. I'm going to help myself line things up by putting some guides in. Layout create guides and I would like to have three rows and three columns. Guides won't print out, they're just there to help line your text up and your images up. Select the rectangle frame tool, place a frame. To copy that frame, go to your selection tool, hold the alt key down on the PC and then slide it down. And you can see I've spaced these out. Now they're not very evenly spaced, but you can certainly work on that. And you'll get these little indicators here, the little arrows that show you they're evenly spaced now. So I've already saved my images into a folder with the rest of my information that I need for this double page spread. So I'm going to click into my first box, File, Place, and I'm going to find cake one. I've renamed all my images as well to give them logical, easy to follow names. And that goes with anything else that I've used on here. I'll we'll place an image in there. Cake two, file, place. File, place, cake three. So there's my cakes that I want to use and I know each of those frames is exactly the same size. I'm going to select all of them and just move them down and over to the side a little bit. In fact, I'm going to line them up on that border there and make sure they're on the bottom of the page. I've got some titles and other information I want to put in here later. If I open my layers, you can see I've got them in the order in which I place them, but I want cake one at the top and cake three at the bottom. So just click and drag those down. If layers is not there, remember window, go to layers, make sure it's ticked and then pop it back in over here. I want to turn each of these images into a button. Click on the first image, go to window, choose interactive and make sure that you have buttons and forms open and buttons and forms has popped out here, I can tear it off and bring it closer to where I'm working. So this first image I have selected, click on the drop down arrow, I want it to be a button. I want this to be called cake one button, push enter. So in the appearance, this is what it looks like right now. Turn on the rollover, turn on the click. Go back to the rollover, double click on the image, hold the shift and control key down on a Mac, enlarge it slightly, click back on the button. Normal should look like that. Rollover slightly enlarged, click should go back to normal. We're going to do the same for the other two buttons. Click on the image, click on the drop down arrow, change it to a button, rename the button cake to button. With the appearance, turn on rollover, 
turn on, click. Go back to rollover, double click on the image, hold the shift and control key down, enlarge the image slightly, click back on normal, click on rollover, click on click just to check it and then click it back to normal. Let's do the third button. Click on the image, tell it you want it to be a button, open rollover, open click, go back to rollover, double click on the image, hold the shift and control key down, enlarge the image slightly, go back to normal, check that they all do what you want them to. Now I forgot to do something here, you can see it didn't hold its name, I need to make sure I do cake button three, then push enter, otherwise that name will disappear. Let's just check this one, I did the same for the second button, cake button two, check the typing, hit enter, let's check the first one, and we have cake button one, fantastic. So the next thing I'd like to do, I'm just going to pop my buttons and forms back over here again. The next thing I'd like to do is bring in the recipes for these um, mug cakes. What I've already done is typed out each of my recipes. So if I click on this recipe here, the classic yellow mug cake recipe, I'm going to rename it and call it recipe one. Then the cocoa banana mug cake, mug cake, I'm going to rename recipe two. And the third one will be, you guessed it, recipe three. So I'm going to put these on top of each other now. So I want uh, the red velvet at the bottom. I want the gluten free on top and the classic yellow mug cake on top of that. Select them, move them over to the center a little bit. Now they're not very well lined up, so with them all selected, go to properties, scroll down, and I'm looking for a line. So this is paragraph, then I have a line. I want to make sure that I'm aligning to selection, and I want to click on this button here, align left edges, and then I want to click on this button here, align top edges. So now my recipes overlap, they're completely lined up. I'm going to copy those again. Control X or Command X to copy them. Bring them up to this page here. Control V to paste. I'm now going to place them using the guides again. So this time I'm going to make the top of the recipe line up with the top of the image here and with the blue border on the side here. So when I go to layers, you can see I have cake button one, which is this green one, cake button two, cake button three, we've already done that. And now I've just brought in recipe one. If I turn recipe two and recipe three off, you can see that's the corresponding recipe for that. Recipe two and recipe three. I need to select the recipes and we're going to use another palette called Object States. If it's not open, go to Window, go to Interactivity and we're looking for Object States. You can tear it off. Select all the, the recipes, all three recipes. I want to click on these two convert them into multi-state. So recipe one is state one, recipe two is state two, recipe three is state three. The other thing I need to do is rename the object name. So this is recipes. So you can check on each of these recipes to see if they work with the object states palette open. Click on state one, that corresponds to that recipe image. State two and state three is the red velvet. I'm going to pop my object states back over here and close layers again. Now I want to bring in my large images and we're going to use the images that we've used already but we're going to use a bigger frame. So this time click on the rectangle frame tool 
pop a big frame in there, file, place, going to go to cake one, open, and there's my image in there. Again, I'm going to use a shortcut to make things a little easy for me. I want to copy this frame, so I'm going to go to the selection tool, hold the Alt key down, and just make a copy of it and make a third copy. So this one I'm going to leave as it is. The back one, I'm going to double click till I get the orange frame for the image. Delete that image, go to File, Place, Find Cake 3. Do the same for the middle one. Make sure you select the frame. Double click, delete the image, file, place, image 2 or cake 2, open, put it into the frame. I have all three of my images there. Again, select all three images and use the align tool, properties, scroll down to align, make sure you're aligning to selection, align left, align top. And there they are all aligned there. I'm going to close my properties. I want to make these states as well. So I'm going to select all three. Make sure my layers is out just to check that I've got my cakes in the right order. One, two, three. Yep. Go back to object states. Create a new state. Call the state large images. Enter state one. State 2, State 3. Back in Layers, I just noticed that Multi-State 1 did not hold its name, and that should be Recipe, so I'm going to rename it. So I've got my buttons, and I've got my large images and my recipes. So now I need to go back to my buttons and start working on adding the rest of the interactivity. So back to buttons and forms, tear it off, bring it closer. I've got button one selected. I want to add an action. Click on the plus sign, go to state. And in this case, I want to go to recipe state one. I want to add a second state. So I add a second state go to state and this time I want to go to large images and I'm looking for state one in large images. So I've done that, go to your second button. So button two, cake button two, add a state, go to state. In recipes, go to state two, add a second, go to state. In large images, Go to state two. Let's do the third button. Button three, go to state, recipes state three. Add a second state, go to state, large images state three. I can preview this by clicking on this button down here, preview EPUB. So if I click on this, I get the correct image. If I click on this, that works. And if I click on this, that works. All that's left to do is add in the titles and any other information I want to put on the page. You, of course, will have different images, different information. But that's a really useful tool to add interactivity to your digital magazine.